So, hi again. I've just finished recording the LX Cute video, um, and seeing as Mint 19 has come out, and well, when were the upgrade instructions released? I think it was like three days ago, and I've already updated both systems to it. Um, I think it's amazing. Um, so I wanted to make a review for it to show off some of the new features. So, um, I will just create a new virtual machine for it quickly. I'm going to give it 4 gigs of RAM. For the last one we simulated a really old system, but I'm not going to do that for this one. So, 4 gigs of RAM, and it's going to have 4 CPU cores, because that's what we have here. 128 megs of video RAM and 3D. I'm going to give it the install image. Here we go. So this will be the Mate version, because that's what I have downloaded. Um, but I might do the Cinnamon version later as well. Anyway, so let's get it started. Here we go. Oh, come on, keyboard. Stop. Oh, OK, fine. So I know this image is good, because I tested this on my laptop before I updated that, because that runs Mint Mate. Uh, a lot of the features between the Mate and the Cinnamon ones are common features. Um, but then I could do a Cinnamon special thing anyway. So I'll have a look at some of the features mentioned in um, their official blog post about it, which I'm going to bring up because I'll otherwise forget what they are. Um, and I'll also just have a look at some general things. So, come on, I can't see their post. Linuxmix.com. I'm surprised it doesn't come up first in Google, actually. Okay. Found it now. What's new? Okay, so, back to this. So, the theme has changed, which you might be able to tell from the icons. So, instead of being Mint X by default, it is now Mint Y. Uh, yeah, it always does this, but if I pick Mint Y, it doesn't change. So it's Mint Y, um, which is what I'm using here in the host as well. I quite like Mint X, but it didn't work very well, so I just went for this. We have some nice new wallpapers, like this one, which I'm using on the host as well. Pick something different because it's a bit weird having the same one. Well, I'm not going to do it yet because we have to install anyway, so none of this will be saved. So, this should be quick because it's on the SSD and we're not limiting the speed this time. So, we want English, UK keyboard. Uh, yeah, might as well, just in case it sorts out VirtualBox stuff for us. Or anything else. So erase the disk because this is a new virtual disk. Go. So by this point it's already started installing the background I believe. Which is different to the Lubuntu one, presumably because they thought that would bog down old machines. Which it probably would. So um this is more tuned for modern yeah you can see it's installing now more tuned for modern machines with more power so this will be really fast because we're like the CD image and the hard drive are both on an SSD I can hear the fans kicking in a bit now hopefully that's not too annoying <laughs> um, but yeah so I'll just talk you through some of the features first quickly so there's time shift which was already there but is now more prominent uh, which is like a system backup program. Um, the update manager no longer disables certain updates by default, which I think is a really good thing. Um, and it tries to persuade you to use time shift, which is a bit annoying. You can also do automatic updates, which is something people have been asking for for ages, so that's nice. Um, 
new welcome screen, which I'll show you in a minute. New software manager with Flatpak support, so we will see that in a minute too. Mate 1.20 for high DPI displays. This is not a high DPI display, so I guess I can't show you that very easily. And some other stuff. Uh, more high DPI stuff, so XApps improvements. Um, which are like fairly minor things, but still important. Other general extra features and things, but generally... So that's like your super quick two minute summary. <laughs> um, generally, I'll just stick this, not there. There. Okay, so generally I found this is much snappier than Mint 18 was, even on old hardware. I'm nearly finished with the installation now. Um, yeah, it's really good. If you're using Mint 18, I hope you upgrade. It's really cool. The upgrade process was a bit awkward for me because I had lots of third-party packages and developer cred installed on my machines. So I had to do some dependency... F well, no, actually, it did a bit dependency fixing for itself. So it was fine. Yeah, so actually it was fine. The only difficulty is that it's a command line tool, which I think is to try and discourage people from doing a package-based upgrade and just doing a fresh install. But it would take me ages to get these systems set up again the way I like. So there's no way I'm doing that. I'm sure a lot of people have a similar sentiment. It's weird because you can see Linux Mint and stuff Linux Mint now. Once I've got the guest editions installed, I will full screen it like before. So probably what I'll do is I'll show you the installation, and then I'll, like with the last video, then I'll pause it, and I will do updates and install VirtualBox guest editions. Because otherwise we may be here for a while. And the other video was a 30 minute video, and it did have some pretty helpful stuff and just general chatting and me yabbering all in it. Hopefully it was interesting. <laughs> um, this one, I'm going to try and keep it a bit more concise. Seeing as I've done a lot of the yabbering already. Okay, we're just about finishing now. Not sure what it's doing now. I guess it's just updating the at database or something. Uh, it's installing some extra, uh, well, that would be the codex and that kind of thing, which I picked to do. Yeah, oh, Adobe Flash, stuff like that. Streaming plugins. That's too quick to read. <laughs> DLC. Okay, right, so let's go. Don't know whether the guest editions will work now, but we'll see. I suppose that's a no. We'll just install them then, that's fine. Don't know whether we'll have sound. Because sound in VirtualBox. Okay, so actually, yeah, let's have a quick look at the welcome screen. Uh, so it's a bit more nicely laid out and takes you through things like this, which is pretty cool. Documentation, help support, that's all pretty nice, nicely done, helpful for people. So let's just do updates quickly. I hope that there aren't very many of them. I don't think there should be. Uh, why are there always updates? Okay, so I'm going to pause it now and I'll do the updates in the guest editions and I'll be back when I've done that. Okay, so it's been about five minutes and I've done the updates and kernel modules are installed. 
So let's reboot and I'll show you what the boot time is like and all that too. Um, also note Hibernate is disabled by default. I tried enabling it but it didn't work, which is a bit annoying. Never worked on a desktop really, but the laptop used to hibernate. So. That's pretty impressive. Beat that Windows 10. Um, not that I'm at all Linux fanboying here. So, quite a nice default desktop background. So I think I'm going to go straight into appearance. So, I don't know. Let's go with a... Oops. Go with a dark theme, maybe. What difference is that? Look. That one's lighter. Let's go with a dark theme. So this is just like Gnome 2 and Mate have always been. That's quite nice. Let's go with that. We've all got the sans fonts, which is good. Good if you have dyslexia and oops, I always do this by accident and just in general. Um, easier to read. So we have calculator, redshift, didn't know that. That's nice. That's what I use to dim the screen in the evening, so, so I can sleep better. GIMP. GIMP 2.8, shame it's not 2.10. I guess you could upgrade it though. Um, and again, notice how snappy this is. I mean, this is running full speed, rather than the other thing which was running slowly, intentionally, but even then it was pretty quick. So we have Firefox, which is going to be... Yeah, so the upgrade... Oh yeah, so the upgrade path was opened on the 4th of July. It is now the 7th of July, so I updated three days ago. <laughs> and yes, I am doing this on a Saturday, but it's fun, so I don't mind. Um, yeah, so that's good. We have Thunderbird, Hexchat, never used it, Transmission. Uh, LibreOffice, which is a new one, because we got the splash screen, so that's all good. We've got VLC, Rhythm Box, a media player, two media players then. Hmm. I wonder why it has both. Um, time Shift. Let's have a look at Time Shift. We don't have BTRFS, so I don't think I can do these. Yeah, I can't do that. So, I'll sync. I'll estimate the size of your system. I had to do this to update, but fortunately you configure it. You can configure it to do nothing. So let's say I want to put the backup there, because I don't have anywhere else to put it. Turn off the schedule. For now. So I could create a snapshot with it to see how it works. I mean, I'm imagining this isn't going to take very long. This is quite a nice interface. As you can see exactly what's happening. Yeah, so it says it would take like a few minutes to do that. I'm not going to wait for it though, um, also I'm just burning through what write cycles on my SSD, so yeah, let's maybe not do that. So we've got the update manager, uh, which relies on time shift to guarantee stability of the system it says, and suggests to apply all updates, which is nice, because I've been wanting to do that for ages. We're not going to do the kernel update, I don't think we really need to. So yeah, same settings as before, except they're all um, ticked now, and you're all to upgrade, which is nice. But we don't need that. I'm not going to keep this machine for long anyway, just long enough to do this video probably, because I don't have tons of space on the SSD. So, 
you can pick a new repository if you find something that's quicker, like University of Kent is usually what I go with, and this one, I don't know, you could go with bike mark or something like that, and then hit OK, and it's really easy. So it just kind of helps you get your updates quicker, which I'm sure everyone is happy about because updates are slow normally. Well, not in Linux, but in Windows, especially in Windows. Faster updates are always a good thing. So next thing, Software Manager, which has changed. I haven't really looked at this, so um, I'm kind of interested to see. It definitely opens faster than it used to. Um, what's this? AD photo realistic skies in real time. That's quite interesting. Not sure what we're running virtual box there. Uh, sublime text, virtual box. I'm not going to try that in virtual box. I don't think that would go well. Uh, Google Earth, no maps. No, no maps was a thing. Uh, let's have a look at accessories. DVD, Conkey, Midnight Commander, all these kinds of things. GUI for HP printers and stuff. Caused me no end of pain, so let's not go there. Um, file Manager, we were just using an LXQT. GTK version of it, but still. Joy Test. If I find something I recognise, I'll install it. Well, that might be useful, that is. Okay, let's go for... I don't know, if I open something like... Programming, there'll be something I recognise in here. We have Python, that's nice. Spider. Python 2. Make. None of this is stuff I can show very easily. I'll just install Leafpad or something like that. JEdit was there too, that's a text editor I used to use on macOS. Uh, but I don't really do that anymore. But yeah, it was pretty good. Written in Java, so unfortunately it was a bit slow, but... Okay. So this doesn't look out of place with this theme at all. Which is nice. Well, I guess it wouldn't, because it's GTK. But yeah, as you can see, it's almost exactly the same as um, Featherpad that we were using in LXQt just now. Well, it might not be just now for you, because I don't know when this is coming out. But it was just now for me probably be coming out pretty soon. Maybe before the LXQ to review, but we'll see. Either way, um, I've mentioned that before, so I'm not exactly spoiling the surprise for you if that comes out first. So there's Mate stuff, which I can't really show you. Improvements to X apps. So we have like XPDF, is it? XViewer? I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> um, well, there's XSED, which is a text editor I program with. Which is... looks more or less the same to me, but that's fine. So I have a setting for Python 3 now and that kind of thing. That would be nice. I hate these scrolling things. To be fair, this tends to automatically detect. Yep, yeah, has Python 3 now. Cool. Um, might have done before. I don't think so. X reader. That's it. Document viewer. Not sure. I don't really have any documents to open there. Um, hmm. 
well, never mind that. But we have the new artwork, as you've seen, and Mint Y is the default theme, so those are the things I mentioned on their blog. But generally, yeah, just how fast it is, is the main thing I've noticed. I mean, this is the Marte version on powerful hardware, so it will be quick, but just in general. Oh, this is nice too. So all of these dialogues use Policy Kit now rather than GKSU, which um, just integrates more nicely with the rest of the system and that kind of thing. It's a bit more secure, which is good too. Ah, oh, okay, this does have packages for it. But I've installed the other ones anyway, so whatever, I suppose. Um, well, that's good to know as well, it makes it easier. Um, yeah, disks, something I tend to use fairly often, that's pretty helpful. There's not that much to, um, not that much more to talk you through, so I guess I'm going to end this video here. But the next one, so damn small Linux may have come out by now, but if it hasn't, the video on it, um, it will be soon. And Xcute may have come out by now, if it hasn't it will be out soon. Um, X11 DNC stuff, some more PXE stuff, some more Sigwin stuff, got like 15 things on my list here to do. So um, there'll be a lot of things, hopefully pretty soon. But until then, um, yeah, have a good one, see you next time.